Good morning and happy new year everyone! On this wonderfully blessed amazing day my son and I decided to finish making a chess table. This is the biggest project of the year with over 50 hours spent on the table and another 50 hours spent editing this video and blurring my son's face. Get ready for a fun ride! So to start things off we went to Sid's sawmill and Sid was super awesome. He picked out a nice maple tree for us and let us use his sawmill to cut the tree up. If you live in Mississauga or greater Toronto area, I suggest you visit him. He's a super nice guy and even if you do not know anything about wood, still visit. He will take his time and explain everything to you. No paid plug at all. I just love Sid Sawmill and try to visit it as often as I can. Sometimes I just go to soak in the energy in there. Being surrounded by things and people bigger than you is very humbling and relaxing. So anyways, back to this. We used this nice maple tree to cut two slabs. The tree was air dried for six years apparently. First and the smaller one I already turned into a coffee table and you saw that video. This one is larger and much thicker and it is for my son to use. Even though two slabs came from the exact same tree and exact same spot in a tree, you will see the end result is different and even the color of the wood ended up being different. This slab somehow turned much darker and richer compared to the one I used to make the table. Once we cut the slabs, we took them home and my son proceeded to remove the bark. As he is removing the bark, you probably can see all the insects running out of the wood, having realized that their home is being taken over and repurposed. Again, compared to the slab I used, this one was filled with a lot more life than my thinner slab. It just radiated more energy as observed by my son. This was going to be great! As you remember, in a video where I was working on a table, I made an observation that the tree used to have a branch when it was younger and someone snapped it off. This scar was much more prominent in this slab since it was cut closer to the center of the tree and thus, unlike the table I made, we had to remove the scar completely. Since, as you notice, the scarred wood is very very soft and sponge-like. Another odd observation we saw while removing that wood is that it smelled really really bad. Usually maple smells quite good, but this wood around the scar just had a very unpleasant odor to it. If you know why that's the case, please do let me know. Our original intent was to put some other thinly sliced wood to cover up the scarred piece. However, after spending the whole day chiseling all the way through the wood and even applying router to some spots, we have come to conclusion that the spot was unsalvageable and decided to cut it out completely. While cutting it out, even with masks on, we were choking. I have never in my life smelled anything quite as rancid before. The wood around the area was just very bad and smelled unbearably horrible. It is a big mystery to me as to why it happened in the first place. And as you can see, due to the smell, we actually had to take quite a few breaks. Even once we cut the piece out, it continued to smell bad. I started fearing that the rest of the wood is going to be smelling just as bad. But we continued on with the project because we have to finish what we started. Once the hole was cut out, my son decided to sand it completely smooth, since while the slab was being cut on a sawmill, the blade was wet. Well, it had to be wet in order to avoid overheating due to friction, but some of that wetness transferred to the wood, so he decided to sand out some of the wet spots. And also, the vibrations alerted every single insect living inside that their time was up, and they were being evicted. Quite a few wood lights ran out. The moisture level of this wood was at 19% when we measured it after sanding. Now that sanding was done, we doused the whole slab in tongue oil. 2 liters total of tongue oil was used throughout 9 weeks we were drying it. You can kind of see me oiling my own slab for the table beside it. My son worked on his slab while I worked on mine. This one we dried a lot longer and gave it a lot more oil since it was very very thirsty. Not to mention, tongue oil did an amazing job of driving remaining insects out. You can see me catching some of them so I can release them outside. Unlike my piece, this one was chock full of life thanks to various holes it had, so number of bark centipedes and wood lice was triple that of my slab. After waiting for 9 weeks until humidity of the wood hit 7%, it was time to turn it into a table. At this point we were still not sure what to do with the hole quite yet. It was horribly large and to be honest I had no idea if it could be salvaged. So an idea of turning it into a chess table was proposed and that's what we did. Original intent was to make it into a coffee table like the one I made with the chessboard in the middle. However, I was concerned about the table not being good structurally 
due to the fact that it would have a giant hole cut in the middle and would fall apart with some movement under all that weight. It was a bit thicker than 2 inches and was very very heavy slab. So thus we decided to cut it into 3 pieces and use corner pieces for legs. So my son cut the slab into 3 pieces with the truck saw and then I added the mitre to it. He wanted to do the mitre too, but unfortunately Festool truck saw doesn't sit securely on the truck with, uh, when at an angle. So I had to do that part myself since I was very worried about the saw accidentally flying off. Even I was scared to make the cut to be honest. It is either I'm doing something wrong or Festool truck saw really is super bad at making mitre cuts. Once the cutting was done, it was time to smooth the whole thing and make it plain. I asked my son to do it, but he told me he didn't feel comfortable with it since he couldn't confidently reach from one end to the other and asked me to use the sled instead for safety. I didn't try to force him since safety is always important and knowing one's limits is too. So my trusty sled came into play once again. Surprisingly, unlike my slab, this one had horrible warping. I'm unsure why it happened. Both slabs came from the same tree, were stored the same way and had the same thing done to them. But my thinner slab barely had any warping, whereas this one warped by half an inch. That was huge. So I ended up rotting it down to 1 and 5 eighths of an inch. I was very sad to see all that thickness go, but it had to be done unfortunately. If you guys have any idea as to what might be the cause, please do let me know. I really would like to understand how same piece of wood that is treated and stored the same way can have such different results. Once I ran the whole thing through the sled, I left that wood to sit for another week while I worked on my slab. When I came back to it a week later, I found more warping. Not as bad as half an inch, but this time it was quarter of an inch. I chose to ignore it and we proceeded to next step, which was putting the chessboard in. Big mistake by the way. My son traced the board and we started cutting out the opening of the board. I was very worried that the wood would smell horrible again just like it did when we were cutting the hole the first time around, but surprisingly it did not. It baffled me a little bit, so I used the dremel around the hole and the wood there smelled really bad, but the wood around the new cut we did actually smelled just like maple wood. I really have no idea about the cause of that bad smell. If anyone lives in Mississauga, I can show you that bad piece of wood where one end smells bad and the other doesn't if you can give me explanation as to why. I kept it just to try to understand the cause later on. Also, I know that using jigsaw is bad. My son did want to use coping saw, but unfortunately I didn't have coping saw large enough to cut out such an opening. And I didn't have any other equivalent tools. So we stuck with jigsaw, which is probably my son's least favorite tool. Once the opening was cut, my son sanded it to make it smoother and that's it. The wood was finally ready to have the board put into it. This is where the problem started again. My son applied some glue around the corner of the board and proceeded to hammer it in. And realization dawned on me. Because jigsaw cuts perpendicular to the surface it is on and the wood was warped, the opening wasn't perfect and thus due to that ended up not looking as good on the opposite end of the wood where opening happened to be larger. Lesson learned. As an additional problem, the wood ended up cracking almost in half while we hammered it in and we ended up with a very big crack going from one end to the other. We were both very disheartened but chose to keep going and finish what we started. Since the original chessboard was made for the table of larger thickness due to the fact that we had no idea it would warp so horribly, a lot of it ended up sticking out. My son didn't want to waste the wood that was sticking out and spent 5 hours cutting it. I'm not going to share the whole footage since both I and GoPro were exhausted waiting for everything to be cut. Kudos to my son for not giving up and cutting it though. Unfortunately, that piece was so thin and eventually was dropped and cracked in half. Having a chessboard that's barely half an inch thick and cut in a wavy way isn't really optimal. And on top of it, as you see here, as while he's cutting it, there are really giant gaps between the board and the table itself. It's really, really depressing. This whole warping was really annoying me, so I ended up using router sled once again. I routed the whole thing until every single piece was one and a quarter of an inch thick. Losing three quarters of an inch of such wonderful wood is a huge morale breaker. But giving up is not something we ever do, and every project started has to be finished. Even if it ends in failure, lessons can be derived and experience gained, which is priceless. So we pushed on. If you guys know what could have caused such a bizarre warping accident, please let me know. As you see, the crack here got even 
bigger compared to when we were hammering it in. I really would like to get to the bottom of this and understand how a piece of wood from the same tree in almost the same spot can have such drastic differences in behavior. Also while routing it I noticed the original miter cut we have made have warped heavily too and were not going to be useful to us anymore. So I got the truck saw out again and made very small cuts to fix up the miters and make sure that the table would go well together again. The audio is scrambled but a few f drops were bombed while cutting it due to the fact that this wood was being so damn stubborn. Once all three pieces were ready it was time to glue everything up. This one I had no idea how to do. My original thought was to have the top of the table resting on a bench and then glue the legs and hold them together until glue set and then slowly rotate the table around and let gravity keep everything together while the glue set. My son however had another idea. This contraption that you see with clamps is what he came up with. I was very skeptical but surprisingly it worked. So pretty much you have a set of clamps pushing out and a set of clamps pushing in. By doing so you ensure that the legs remain motionless in one spot at the same position and then you can simply put the tabletop on top, put some weights on top and let it really get glued up. I put about I think 200 pounds on top of the table to make sure it really pressed down. This worked out way better than what I wanted to do originally and resulted in a very strong bond. Lesson is let your kids experiment and listen to them. Their non-corrupted brains can think outside of the box. I'm happy to have learned a trick from this. And now it was time to seal up the cracks and gaps and oh boy they were absolutely horrible. Especially the crack on the ends. It was huge and as you can see we could stuff a lot of wood shavings in there. We took them from the dust bag when we used the saw and put all of them in there and kept putting them in until it was full. Then we poured glue into every single opening we had and kept pouring glue until no more would go in. Following that I took out Dremel and proceeded to generate fine sawdust around the cracks and my son mixed the glue with sawdust thus creating very fine paste to make sure that every single crack was fully closed. We let the whole thing rest for 3 days. Once everything looked good it was time to sand the ever living crap out of all the glue residue. I was very scared to let my son use the belt sander since I sanded my own hand when I used it for the first time but he was better than me having seen me screw it up so he made sure to take it slow and easy. He kept sanding and sanding until all the glue residue was removed and nothing but smooth and clean surface remained. This is sped up a little bit and some parts are missing but it was one hour of sanding very very carefully. The table was almost ready but before finishing it up there was still one more problem left. It had a huge hole going through the leg. This was home to three or so dozen of wood lice but after shining a very bright flashlight and even taking pictures the hole was straight. There was nothing branching off in there so my son used the drill to widen the hole a little bit then put some glue and push the dowel right through and then cut the excess off once the glue dried up a little bit. Now it was time to finish the table. Commence sanding mode. Just like with the coffee table I made, this table was sanded all the way to 4000 grit. My son started off at 80 grit to give it a shape and then slowly went up to 4000. Me having made the table first was very good experience for him to learn from, so he simply repeated what I did for my table. Sand everything, wipe thoroughly with paper towels while making car sounds, then sand on higher grit and keep going until 4000 grit is reached. I know some of you say that there is absolutely no need to go up to 4000 grit. And I do agree with you, however the point of sanding isn't for the table. It is for peace of mind and achieving the zen state of flow. I'm noticing even my son entered it because around 800 grit he stopped making car noises and talking at all and just focused on sanding. I do feel bad however that I can't find any anti-vibration gloves for him. I know he's young but the amount of sanding he did for this project can't be good for the nerve endings in his hands. If you guys have any advice on how I can obtain a child anti-vibration gloves please do let me know. Once sanding was done a very very generous amount of oil was applied. We applied a total of 5 coats of oil both on top and bottom of this table. I do not know if it is all the oil we applied or just this wood being particularly weird but the color of it was much much darker than the table I made. The only thing I can possibly blame for it is just the fact that this wood drank a lot more of tang oil than my table and we put a total of 5 coats of this instead of 4. So maybe that's the case or maybe this wood is just really stubborn and likes being different from my table. 
And now that the table was almost ready, the last thing left to do was to wax it. You can see my son really went overboard with wax here, but I wasn't going to stop him. The excitement in his face was too much, so I let him go ahead and apply three very, very, very generous coats of wax. My poor wax container was crying and was almost empty, but the excitement in my son's face made it all worth it. And that's it! This is the final project of this year, a culmination of all the skills attained this year applied in one grand project. And it was glorious and actually worked, and chess and games were played on it. I'm very surprised that it actually worked. My son, however, was confident that it would work since he believed that the wood spirit would be happy to be a chess table. This video took a total of 100 hours to make. If you guys enjoyed it, please do give it a like and maybe subscribe if you like what you see. I try to release a video every week and so far I have succeeded in doing so for 52 weeks straight. I hope all of you guys have a wonderful new year filled with happiness, health and all the goodness you desire. Bless you all! Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me on this woodworking trip. I really appreciate each and every single one of you. Happy New Year! If you guys have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to tell me. Or just say hi. I will say hi back. Thank you again for everything, you guys. I will see you in the new year with a lot more projects to come. And trust me, I have some crazy stuff I wish to achieve in this upcoming summer. So stick around and subscribe. See you guys in a week. Feliz Ano Novo! Bye bye! See you next year!